Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I've got a pattern release for you. And it's so good, I'm so excited to share this. Okay, you may be wondering why I'm not standing in front of my wall, you know, put things on mannequins. And that's because this pattern release is a pair of pants. And um, I made it in a cotton velveteen. So we are going to be talking about velvet and how to sew, cut and sew with velvet. Um, but I, there wasn't a good way for me to, I can't put pants on my mannequin and I want to be able to show you all the details and stuff on this. So by putting everything up on, um, you know, with me in them and all that kind of stuff, hopefully that's enough where you can really see what these pants look like. And while I'm talking about them, I'll have all that kind of stuff up. Okay, guys, this is the newest Love Notions pattern. It is the car or Largo Cargo. I always want to say that backwards. The Largo Cargos, and it is such a good pattern. It is your standard cargo pant. It's got patch pockets in the front. It has patch pockets in the back. It has your cargo park pocket on one leg. You can put it on both if you wanted to. And a fun little hammer strap um, that connects the back pocket to the front side seam, you know, for you to hang your hammer, which makes them such a cool utility looking pair of pants. They sit just right below natural waist and they've got a faced waistband instead of a actual or faced waistline instead of a waistband and I love this so much. Um, you know my favorite Upland trousers um, by Itch to Stitch are also a faced waistband. I just find them to be very flattering on my short torso um, and my straighter through the waist. I am just over the moon about these cargo pants. Um, they're meant for non-stretch fabric. She has made them in the entire size range that she has and has included a full belly piece if you need that, which I do. <laughs> the full belly piece means um, I'm able to make a straight size in these as well. So um, let me talk you through a little bit about the size I made and then we're gonna look at the pair that I made and talk about the fabric last because it, these are ridiculous and I love them so much. All right, I made the size 12 with the full belly front. If you carry a little bit of an extra pooch in your lower front belly, the full belly is amazing. You can look at the size chart and see um, the difference that, that makes for the waist. So it makes the waist a little bit bigger um, for that size, which is what I need because I'm very straight through my hips and waist as well. Uh, but it just fits. Everything fits a little bit better. It gives you just a little bit of extra room um, through that belly area and um, a little bit more ease. I made the size 12, straight size 12, and the only alterations that I made to these was I shortened the leg by an inch. Um, I'm only 5'2", and she does draft for a 5'5", five, five or 5'6". Five, I um, can't remember. It's in her size chart, um, which you would think I would need to shorten it more by it than an inch, but I have long legs for my 5'2 frame. I have a very short torso, so I only had to lose an inch. Um, in the length of the leg. And then I did scoop the back crotch curve by three eighths of an inch. That is for the shape of my butt. I have to do that on all pairs of pants. I just need a little bit of extra room there in that back crotch curve and three eighths of an inch gives me a really great fit. And that is all that I have done with this pair of pants. And I love them so much. All right, let's talk about this version. I have used a cotton velvet sateen. So basically, um, velveteen, or sorry, so not, it's not a sateen. That was, that's not true. <laughs> it's a cotton velveteen. <laughs> sorry, in this beautiful chocolate brown color. So um, I had this, I actually think I had this in my stash for a blazer. I'm so glad I made pants out of it. So cotton velveteen is, it's a velvet, but the, the used cotton. Um, so it usually has a little bit more body. It's, um, you see little girl dresses actually, like holiday dresses in it a lot, but it has a little bit more body, but still has that velvet texture, still has that nap to it. Um, it's not as drapey as say a silk velvet or even a polyester velvet or, um, like a rayon silk blend velvet. Those all have much more drape. Those are beautiful for like evening gowns and stuff where you want beautiful cowls or a flowing skirt or that sort of thing. Cotton velveteen is great for um, anything that you want a little bit more structure, like a pair of cargo pants. So I have made um, mine out of a cotton velveteen and we're gonna talk about how to cut and sew with velvet here in just a second. So as you can see, it's got these patch pockets here on the front. Um, I've put the, the loop here from the back pocket to the front on there. 
It's got patch pockets. There we go. Patch pockets on the back. You can see that a little bit better. There's my pockets that are there on the front. It's got, I use um, snaps instead of buttons. There is my leg pocket. I only put it on one side there on the leg. Um, and then snaps for both of those instead of buttons. Um, it's got a zip fly that's in there. And I um, faced mine with just a um, rayon 12 that I had in my stash so that um, it wouldn't be as bulky. Um, and that's what's up against my body. And then it's got belt loops, zipper fly. I mean, and there's a lot of top stitching, which can be tricky with velvet, but I, we're going to talk about velvet here in just a second so that um, my five tips for sewing with velvet. Anyway, I am just over the moon with these pants. And not only that, I just love the fit of these so much. I think these would be fun to take kind of those cargo details off. You could leave the patch pockets. Um, I don't know that I'd want to, I mean, you could draft different pockets for the front if you wanted to um, instead of using these. But with the, um, faced waistband. I think I would just leave the pockets as is. But if you took off the strap and this and the leg pocket and stuff, they look more like trousers and a lot less like um, cargo pants. So you could make these in you know a few different ways and have completely different, you know, looking pants in your wardrobe, which I think is amazing. I just I'm just over the moon with these. <laughs> they're just they're ridiculous and I can't wait to wear them all um uh fall and into the winter as well probably more so in the winter. I don't know that it's going to get, you know, it has to get cool enough for me to be able to wear them. The other good thing about cotton sateen is that it's breathable because it's cotton. It's 100% cotton. So, um, you know, you don't have to worry about getting warm, you know, with a polyester or that, that sort of thing. But you also would want a um, cotton um, velveteen, probably just to hold the shape of the pants as well, if you're also wanting to make a pair of velvet pants for yourself. <laughs> so I think without the cargo, um, you know, you can't, I don't know that I would wear the velvet cargo pants to like a formal event, but if you took the cargo details off, you could totally wear those to a formal event with like a silk top or something, um, a neat blazer, um, and make it very holiday appropriate, which I think is a lot of fun. But today I have five things um, that I want to talk about, five tips for sewing with velvet. I've written them down. I was writing them down as I was sewing these pants so that I wouldn't forget. Okay, my so we're gonna go through my five tips. And this is just sewing for velvet, not just for these pants, but sewing with velvet at any given time. Tip one is to cut out on a single, single layer. If you put two layers of velvet together, right sides together, and kind of push hard, you'll notice that they kind of move around because that nap moves. Um, cotton velveteen has a little bit lower nap than like uh, polyester or silk velvet, so it helps you out a little bit, but it still moves. So when you are cutting things out, um, I highly recommend cutting them out single layer. I know that's a pain, but uh, you definitely want um, to do that so that you get things on grain appropriately and, um, you know, your spots are marked right where you want them to be marked and all that, you know, your into your darts and stuff like that all gets marked appropriately. So tip one is cutting out on a single layer. Tip two is making sure all of your pieces are going the same way. Now, um, Velvet has an app. So when you look at it, it looks different this way than it looks going this way. Because the nap and when you pet velvet, you can feel it's real smooth one way and rougher when you go the other way because um, they're like little hairs that are on there. So if you cut one leg going one direction and the other leg going the other direction, you're going to be able to tell. <laughs> you're going to, I mean, you could do that on purpose. You could cut your fronts with the nap going one way and your backs with the nap going the other way if you're wanting that for a design detail. But um, most of us, you want all of your pieces. You don't want to accidentally have just one leg that's going the opposite way. Um, you want to make sure that the nap, which is if it's all, everything's brushing the same way. So all your pieces need to be um, facing the, the correct way. Now, if you want your nap to go you know, when you're wearing the pants, if you want it to be smooth going down 
or smooth going up. So which way you want the nap is completely up to you. Play around with the yardage. You know, push your hand up and down and decide which one you like better and which way you would like your pants to go. You really can choose either way. Mine is smooth when I go down my leg. That's the way I decided to do the nap for these. But that is very important thing to pay attention to with velvet. Just make sure all your pieces are going the same way. All right, number three is how to press your velvet. Velvet can crush, which means heat and pressure can make a mark very easily in your velvet. The way I get around this, you can buy velvet boards that look like Velcro almost. Um, I've seen people do that too. Take Velcro and just wrap it around like a dowel rod and press their seams open on that. What I do is I just take a scrap of the velvet and wrap my um, ham or my um, seam roll. I just lay it on top of that. So when I'm pressing very lightly, my seams open or to one side. The right side of the velvet is also against velvet, so it helps it not to um, crush as much. Also, you don't want to, you want to lightly hit, you know, steam, especially with cotton velvet is your friend, um, and you want to lightly touch. Try not to do too much pressing down hard um, because that could mark the, the dart. So lighter is better. <laughs> And again, I just wrap my um, pressing tools with a scrap of the same velveteen or velvet, and that helps um, not crush any of the pile. Tip number four is to use a walking foot or dual feet if your machine has it. They're basically the same thing. You just want to make sure that when you've got those right sides together, just remember the reason we didn't want to cut them out um, together is because they shift. They do the same thing when you're sewing. So if you've got a walking foot, I highly recommend a walking foot anyway. That is one of the top things I would recommend any seamstress have. Um, you can buy them generically from almost any machine online for very reasonable, but um, having a walking foot because it really makes a difference with a lot of different fabrics. Knits are great velvets, anything with a nap, anything thicker. That walking foot just makes sure that the top layer of fabric is getting fed through at the same rate as the bottom layer of fabric. You know, your feed dogs are pulling fabric through. You want those layers going through at the same time, and a walking foot makes that happen. You can also use dual feed on your sewing machine if you have dual feed. Um, you know, just not a ton of machines have dual feed, um, but that also feeds things, your top layer through at a similar rate to your bottom. So you want that to keep your seams from creeping along. All right, and then tip five is for as much as possible, and this is especially with, mostly with top stitching, try and keep your stitches all going down the nap. So, you know, when I said um, when you go down your fabric, the side where it's smooth, and again, that could be sewing up your pants if you decide to flip the nap. But you want to sew as much as possible going down the nap. When you're sewing against the nap, a lot of times you, you know, can push that up and sometimes it can uh, scar and get marred. There's sometimes when you're top stitching a pocket in that um, it just doesn't work, but I'm gonna show you how I did my pockets so that I could try and keep that nap going as much as possible. So I sewed down and then over and off for two lines of top stitching. It's not so bad when you're going across the nap, it's when you, um, so I would go down, and then I went over and went down this side and across and off, and did that twice. And then I just bar tacked up here at the top, um, because if I were to go down, across, across again, and then back up, um, the nap is going to get pushed up by those feed dogs, and a lot of times that can look kind of marred. So, I mean, sometimes you just can't avoid it, and you have to go against the nap, and then just a matter of, of smoothing that back down, hitting it with some steam, brushing it back down. But if, as much as possible, if you can go with the nap when you're sewing, the better it lays and the better results you have. I have a ton of top stitching on these pants just because they're cargo pants and there's a lot of top stitching on cargo pants. And um, I feel like I don't have any spots where I've got marred um, nap. So as much as you can, try and go with the nap. So the smooth going with it, uh, the nap going down <laughs> when you're top stitching those things on. Even if that means getting creative with your top stitching. 
So there you have it, guys. Those are five tips for you to use if you are thinking about tackling some knit pants, dress, or sorry, not knit, velvet pants or a velvet dress or anything else, especially as we're going into the cooler seasons um, or the holiday seasons, um, holiday seasons everywhere, but the cooler seasons up here in the Northern Hemisphere. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Um, grab this pant pattern. It is on release sale right now. You can use my code TKS10 for an additional 10% off. Um, that code does change though at the beginning of October. So, um, keep an eye out. Um, my, the, our codes change quarterly, but you can get an additional 10% off right now with TKS 10. So make sure and use that to get your additional percent, 10% off the sale price and grab it now while it's on release sale. It's very exciting. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. I hope you'll give the Largo Cargos a try and um, let me know if you do. All right, guys, have a good one and I'll see you next time. Bye.